Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 8, reads as follows. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hands, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Amen? Amen. Just for a moment this morning, we want to speak to you from this subject. You may be seated. Pay attention uh, to the Lord God. Pay attention to the Lord God. Uh, And just a short way of putting it like the old folk would say, pay attention. Pay attention. Now what does it mean to pay attention? Uh, We've heard folks tell us that from the time we've come up from children to the time even that we're adults. Uh, What does that mean? Uh, It simply means this. It means to be attentive. It means to listen. It means to take note. Uh, In biblical terms it meant to heed. Uh, It also meant to focus on. In other words it meant to keep your mind on something or somebody. Amen. There are many dire situations and circumstances. There are compunction and dysfunction. There are ills and spills that we, we see happening in society today. And all of it is because of the result of a failure to pay attention to God. You notice everything that's going on today. Problems in D.C., Problems in the city government. Problems in the uh, parish government. Problems just everywhere. And they always ask one question. Why can't we figure this out? Why can't we get this straight? Why can't we get everybody on one accord? Why can't we come to compromise? Why can't we just, as Rodney King would say, just get along? It's all because nobody wants to pay attention to the Lord. Amen. Too many people in society are suffering today and and they're suffering from something we want to call a case of spiritual attention disruption disorder. Or if we spell it out as S-A-D-D and we speak it out, it meant sad. Too many people are suffering from sad today. And if you look at it, Satan has planted sad unto the world landscape because he doesn't want anyone to pay attention to God. No, no. Think about it. Sad contributes uh, to a person's experience in what we also want to call hard symptoms. Because of spiritual attention disruption disorder, a person becomes hard-headed. They become hard of hearing. They become hard-hearted. They become hard-handed. And it becomes hard for a person to shout hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, think about it. Uh, when a person has a case of the sad, it's hard for them to do anything. They walk around with their head hung down. They walk around with their mouths poked out as the old folk used to say. They walk around with a frown on their face. All because they're suffering from sads. Yeah. But understand something. The devil delights when sad causes a person to turn their attention away from God. That's why he sends sad out on the landscape. He does it because he figures when people are sad, they can't focus on God because they're too busy focusing on their mourning and their suffering. Why does he delight? And people having sads. Why does the devil want us to have sads? Why does the devil want you to suffer from hard symptoms? Well, believe it or not, the devil reads the Bible. He knows the Bible. He knows it better than a lot of people know it. Some folks say he read it from front to back. Can to can. Why does he want you to suffer from sad? Well, one reason is because he knows Psalms 1 and 6 says this. He knows that it says, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. Yes, he does. But notice, the way of the ungodly shall perish. If you're sad, and you're suffering from the hearts, the heart 
symptoms, you're going to be in a situation where you won't listen to anything anybody has to say. Godly things don't make sense to you. Ungodly things get your attention. Look at the world today. Everything ungodly is popular in society. What they call reality, which is not reality in itself, but artificial, reality shows are popular. Springer's getting rich off of ungodly things. Mari Povich is getting rich off of ungodly things. Neutral Bill Cunningham is making a name for himself off of ungodly things. All of the judge shows that are coming on TV are on TV because of ungodly things. The reason why the devil delights in people having sadness and suffering from hard symptoms is because Proverbs 13 and 15 declares this. It says, good understanding gains favor. Yeah, right. But the way of the unfaithful or the way of the transgressor is hard. Yeah, when I read this scripture, I learned something. God put something in my spirit. We as Christians a lot of times uh, uh, have a tendency of making a mistake of saying, oh, this journey is so hard. And God said, don't say that. Because the way of the transgressor is hard. If you strive and if you pushing and pressing toward the mark and doing what God is telling you to do, it may be a challenge, but it ain't hard. If you're going against God, what God wants you to do, if you're turning your back away from what God wants you to do, according to the scripture, you're a transgressor. And so your way is hard. Satan also loves when the hard symptoms set in because a person who has hard symptoms is never able to truly prosper. Yeah. My God. Many of us are looking at people and say, well, look at these folks who are prospering because they're doing all the wrong things but look like all the good things coming to them. Oh no. Don't let that fool you. It might look like all the good things are coming to them but that's not happening. God has a plan for his people. Yes, but God also has a plan for those who don't do what they're supposed to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now notice this. Why does the devil want you to suffer from hard symptoms? He knows what Job 9 and 4 says. This is what the word says. It says, God is wise in heart. Yes. And he's mighty in strength. Who has hardened himself against God and prospered? In other words, who have gotten a big head and gotten hard-headed against God and benefited from it? There's no record in the Bible where somebody went against God and prospered from it. Cain went against God's direction not to let sin take over and look what happened. He killed his brother, he suffered from it. Absalom went against his father, went against the word of God because he thought he was so pretty. Because his hair was so lovely. The same thing that he walked around looking at himself in the mirror talking about his hair, combing his hair was the very thing that wound up sending him to his death. Saul turned against God. Decided he wanted to follow the people. And because he wanted to follow the people and he got hard-headed, God took his kingdom away from him. Hard-headed, hard-heartedness don't get you nowhere. Judas Iscariot's heart got hard against the Lord our Savior. Because Jesus happened to tell him, your heart's not right, son. You need to turn your heart and follow me. You follow me, but you're not really following me. You're carrying the money bag, but you're not really looking at the mercy that you should be looking at. Hard-headedness and sadness caused Judas to turn on Jesus. But look what happened when he turned on Jesus. He wound up going out and hanging himself. Not only did he hang himself, he wound up dropping down and going to hell. It's the sad and hard conditions that help Satan to draw a person's attention away from God by using what we want to call his T-R-A-P-S. Oh, that's sharp with traps, and it means this. His temporarily rewarding artificial prosperity schemes. The devil's good at showing you the temporary. He makes 
the temporary look like it's the best thing that ever happened to you. Right. Notice this. He uses temporary technology or the trap technology to take people's attention away from trusting God. I've never seen so many people in the world walking with their head down all the time. And they're always looking down because they're trying to see what's going on on their personal screen. Yeah. He uses riches to take people's attention away from the relationship with God. So many people so busy trying to get money that they're missing out on the mercy of God. Amen. When the money runs out, they think things are all over. But if they had the mercy of God, they wouldn't have to worry about it. Amen. The devil uses accolades to take people's attention away from appreciating God. Everybody wants to be a star. You notice that? Everybody wants to be big time. Everybody wants to be, yeah, sister, wants to blow up. Everybody wants the light to shine on them. All about them. It's about me. It's about mine. It's about what I can get, what I got. Look at my bling, look at my cash. Some other minister friends, this the old folks and the old preachers used to say this. If you take a dog and dress him up in jewels and fur, he's still a dog. You can put lipstick on a pig, but it don't make him a bathing beauty. You can dress a dog up. What you say, Deacon? Give him the best guy in the, in the neighborhood. Or mine is can have on the best shoes, the most gold and platinum in his teeth, but he's still a thug. He ain't nothing but dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Might look good coming to you, but oh, when he opens his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> the devil uses power to take people's attention away from praying to God. Why is the country, why you see city councils and federal government and governors and all these folks all messed up and fighting one another? Because why are they fighting over what they think is power? Yeah. That's right. Everybody wants to be the one that's running everything. If my idea is not the one that's chosen, it ain't going to be done. I'm the one got to run this. Yeah. Amen. Stay up 24 hours a day trying to figure out how to solve a problem, but the all city evangelicals, they all sexuality and, and trends and vices yeah. to take people's attention away from salvation and treasures and the victory in God. Yeah, amen. Yeah. The Bible tells us there's a time to love yeah. yes, it is. there's a time to hate. Yeah, it is. Whenever I see folks coming on here we go on, on these television shows and got cross around their neck saying they Christian that they love God so much but then one one But then don't understand why God said, I see you. I know what you're doing. But then you got so-called preachers telling them, that's all right. Do what you want to do. Do it how you want to do it. Just as long as you go to church for a couple of hours on Sunday and throw some money on the table, everything going to be all right. You ain't at a gentleman's club trying to make it rain. God ain't worried about your money. No, not. Tell you what, show me a scripture where God say when everybody get the glory, the elders gonna pull out a roll of hundreds. The angels gonna be flattening their platinum cards. Jesus gonna roll up in this huh, roll rod. When he come back down to pick up his creature, he gonna come back down 
but he's going to rain dollars down on his people. Yeah. Yeah. I heard about streets of gold. I hear about a lamb that's washed in the blood. Yeah, man. I hear about a lamb that sits at the right hand of the Father. Yeah, man. I hear about a light that shines that would, that would not be any night but all day there. Yeah, man. Hallelujah. I love. Now some people are of the opinion that God doesn't care one way or the other yeah, about who is paying attention to Him or anything He has to say. In his word, in his intentions, anything. Some of these people even say, ah, none of that has to has any impact on anybody or anything. Yeah. It don't matter. However, their opinion is incorrect because this is what God says about the matter in Jeremiah 16 and 19. His word says this. He says, To whom can I give warning? Yeah. Who will listen when I speak? He said their ears are closed and they cannot hear. They scorn the word of the Lord. They don't want to listen at all. So now, I'm filled with the Lord's fury. Yes, I'm tired of holding it in. That's bad when God say, I'm tired. Knowing mom and daddy would say, look, I'm tired now. When you've done something so many times and they done told you, say, I done told you and now I'm just tired of telling you. Yeah. Yeah. Usually when they say I'm tired, trouble about to come down on you. Yeah. Yeah. They about to come down on you hard and consistently. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Much. Bible says this. He says, I will pour out my fury, listen to this, on children playing in the streets. Yeah. On gatherings of young men, on husbands and wives and on those who are and gray. Yeah. Their homes will be turned over to their enemies, yeah. as with their fields and their wives. What do you see rapid going on today? Man, somebody came and took dude wife. Yeah. And it wasn't who he thought it was going to be. Yeah. Somebody came and stole her husband, and it wasn't who they thought it was going to be. What do you see everybody big time losing their houses, losing their homes? God's word is coming to pass. He says this For I will raise my powerful fist Against the people of this land Says the Lord From the least to the greatest The lives are ruled by greed Hmm, From prophet to priest They are all frauds (laughs) The world starts saying With these big time preachers Big time priests. Yeah. Well, right now, an American preacher, the people's preacher, but he ain't God preacher. He got a problem. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, they offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wounds. In other words, they got blood shooting out of their neck, but he's trying to put a bandage on it. Yeah. Their leg been cut off, but they won't even put a tourniquet. They're saying it's going to be all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One eye put out and they said, no worry, you still got another one. They give assurances of peace when there is no peace. Amen. Are they ashamed of their disgusting actions? Not at all. They don't even know how to, how to blush. Used to be when somebody did something wrong and they would be ashamed of it. Now they do it, they say, I'm proud that I'm doing it. Yeah. Ain't that ashamed? And that's just the way I am. That's what I do. I do what I do. Therefore, they will lie among the slaughter. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Act for the old and godly way. Walk in it. Travel in it. And you will find rest for your soul. Amen. But you reply, no, that's not the road we want. Yeah. I posted watchman over you who said, listen for the sound of the alarm. Pay attention. But you replied, no, we won't pay attention. Therefore, listen to this. All you nations, take note of my people.
people's situation. Listen, all the earth. I will bring disaster on my people. Yes. It is the fruit of their own schemes because they refuse to listen to me. Amen. They have rejected my word. Why is this happening? Because you won't listen. Yeah, yeah. Why are things not going the way you want to go? Because you ain't paying attention. Yeah. Why can I get what I want to get? Because God said you rejected Him. Yeah. Why can't they get the seat they want to get? Why are they angry they can't get in the White House? Because they think it belongs to them. Because God said, I decide who be in the White House. Yeah. I decide who's in the governor's house. I decide who's in the mayor's house. Yeah. Got too many people out there telling people, I'll make you, I'll break you. But they ain't got nothing. I'm a self made man. I said this one before. You self made, you came out of your mother's womb, didn't you? So you saying your mother didn't birth you? You a self made man. Mom and daddy had nothing to do with it. Somebody needs to have a long talk with you. So as we leave this morning, yeah. Be attentive. Listen. Take note. Take heed. Focus. Yeah. Keep your mind on the Lord. Yeah. Right. Pay attention. For the Lord is our God. The Lord alone is our Father. Yeah. Amen. On the Lord your God with all your heart. Love Him with all your heart. Love Him with all your soul. Love Him with all of your strength. Commit yourself wholeheartedly to His commands Amen. that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Amen. Not just the children, repeat it to yourself. Amen. God is God, and there's nobody else but God. Amen. God is my Father, and nobody else is my Father. Amen. God is my help, and nobody else is my help. Amen. God is my keeper, and nobody else is my keeper. Amen. God is the only one who can lead me, guide me, protect me, preserve me. Uh, 
be, be filled with hatred toward men. Don't let your tongue spew out all kind of nasty stuff and profane stuff and stuff that just don't make no sense. You're tearing people down. Yeah. Let your hell and be filled with hallelujah to God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. You, you know when you're saying glory to God, hallelujah, Jesus, you can't cuss nobody out. No, no. When you pay attention to the Lord, you prosper when your head is filled with God. You prosper when your hearing is focused on God. You prosper when your heart is fueled by God. You prosper when your hands are fastened to God. And you prosper when your hallelujah is flowing to God. As long as you call it on God's name, you got God in your heart. When you say, Lord, for you I live and for you I die. That's right. When you like the old folks standing on the porch in the morning, yeah. washing clothes in the, in the old people used to say in the washroom, yeah. Yeah. Uh, washing your dishes, what used to be in the dishpan, yeah. standing by the window, yeah. Yeah. saying, Lord, keep me day by day. Lord, yeah. let nobody like you. Lord, you fix it for me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, when you pay attention, yeah, right. you know when God's around. Yeah. Yeah. My auntie used to say, "You gonna?" I woke up this morning yeah. with my mind yeah. stayed on Jesus. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah, my God! Yeah. Hallelujah, great God! Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Thank you, God. When you pay attention yeah. to the Lord, yeah. God pays attention yes, he does. to you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Regardless of what you're doing, He's watching you now. Amen. Some will say, "Well, how God know what I'm doing?" Well, God knew you're texting when you got your head down, and He's talking to you. Yeah. Amen. When you're texting on your screen, God's saying, "I got some text you need to be looking at." You got the wrong text, son. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the screen you should be looking at. That's right. Pull out this screen. That's right. Look at those sixty-six apps that I got. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. I got sixty-six apps right. Yeah. Won't cost you nothing. Yeah. Everything you need is right here. Pay attention to what I got right here. How you know if I'm listening to you, Lord? Well, I know if you got the earphones in, you ain't listening to me. You listening to somebody. But it ain't my voice. Because if it was my, my voice, you wouldn't have the earphones in. You know how you listen to me when I'm talking? Yeah. 
and went in anyway. Yeah, mercy, Lord. <laughs> Lord. How you know if you're paying attention? You're driving on the highway and you're, woo! You weren't paying attention. No, yeah, mercy. And the police officer said, well, you didn't pay attention to that speed limit sign that they had up there that said 65. Yeah. Yeah, you were taking some liberty. You were 10 miles over your liberty. Yeah. And so you weren't paying attention now, but I got your attention now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They tell you pay when you park your car, but you forget to pay your car. Go on when you come back. Yeah. What happened? You didn't pay attention. Oh, yeah. That's all we got to do, children. Thank you, Lord. Don't look at all this stuff in the world. My We're looking at too much worldly stuff. Yeah. And the devil's winning because he thinks he's winning because he's got everybody looking in his direction. Yeah, yeah. They're looking at what he wants them to look at. Right. They're focusing on what he wants them to focus on. My God. But all you have to do is just take a little time and take your attention off that way. Yeah. And do what God said. Look straight ahead. Yeah. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Yeah. But listen to that voice that's coming from behind in your ears. Telling you to go straight on. Yeah. Press on straight ahead. Yeah. Because I'm leading you where you need to be. Yeah. I'm going to take you where I told you I was going to take you. Yeah. I'm going to bring you where I said I was going to bring you. But yeah. you got to pay attention. That's the first thing the teachers told us in school. Yeah. Follow instructions. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Pay attention. Yes. And whenever you didn't do something... My. You weren't supposed to do it. You got the wrong grade. That's the very thing the teacher would tell you. Well, why didn't I get a good grade? Yeah. And I all remember my teacher would say this. You didn't pay attention. Yeah. And you were paying attention. Yeah. You would have passed the test. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I know you wasn't paying attention. How you know I wasn't paying attention? Because I told you the first thing to do, put your name on the paper. Yeah. Uh, my, my. Well, well, I, I, I did everything else. I answered all the questions, yeah, but you didn't pay attention. I said, put your name on your paper. Yeah, Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. But I got every answer right, no. Yeah. I told you. You had to put your name on your paper. Yeah. And God is trying to let the world know today. Everybody want to go to heaven. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Nobody got their name written on the paper. Yeah. If your name not in the book, huh. if it's not written where God said it has to be written, yeah. you can do all you want to do. Yeah. Say what you want to say. Yeah. Think what you want to think. But it won't matter. Yeah. Because in the end, <coughs> everybody gonna look and say, God, why can't I come to hell? Yeah. Why am I in hell? Why am I suffering now? And God is simply say this. You didn't pay attention. Yes, sir. Lord Jesus. You didn't pay attention. But when you get to glory, and you're standing before God, and Jesus opened his arms to you and said, Come on in. You did the main thing. Yeah. You paid attention. Yeah. What? You paid attention. Yeah. And because you paid attention to what I had to say. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you, Lord. Into your new home. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And you always notice something? I had to laugh at this when the Lord said this. I said, look at this. He said, y'all were soldiers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He goes on. Yeah. And whenever the general come by, y'all know what they, the general said? The father said when the general steps into the presence of the soldiers. Every time, it don't matter. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. When that general comes in the presence of those soldiers, yeah. that sergeant always says, Attention. Yeah. In other words, attention. Oh, yeah. Stand at attention. You're in the presence of the general. Yeah. When you come here, when you're living your life, 
Just think about that. I'm a soldier. Yeah. And whenever I come into the presence of God, a tent, huh? Thank you, G. I'm standing at attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. And when it's all over with, yeah, yeah. and the battle is won, the same general will come to your soldier and he will say this, at ease, soldier. Yeah. At ease. Yeah, you made it. Thank you, G. Pay attention, children. Pay attention to the Lord.